Hey friends, I'm Sam from DIY Huntress and this is my first house. Over these past few months, I, along with the help of my family and friends, have been on a journey to turn my first house into the home of my dreams, one DIY project at a time. Throughout this adventure, I'll be sharing tips, tricks, and DIY projects that can be tackled by anyone on any budget and on any timeline. This time around, we are focusing on the heart of this home, the kitchen. Welcome to my Kitchen Remodeler series. Let's get started. Hey friends, it's Sam from DIY Huntress and welcome back to my kitchen. I feel like it's been a while since we've hung out in here together. So if you have followed along on my channel, then you might remember my dad and I completely demoed the kitchen and the dining area of my first house. In fact, if you remember, there used to be a wall right here. So if I were talking to you a few months ago, you'd be talking to a wall because there was a wall there. And there was a wall here too. There were so many walls that we took down in this kitchen. So there has been so much that's been happening behind the scenes in this house over the past few months that has led up to this moment right here where we finally get to start putting my kitchen back together. Is it considered putting it back together if you're starting fresh, putting my kitchen together, period, question mark. I have been waiting for this moment for so long and I'm so excited to get started on this full kitchen remodeler series and to get started on building the kitchen of my dreams. Now, while today's video is not necessarily going to be project-based, it is going to be planning-based. So I'm gonna spend some time recapping how we got to this moment right here with all these beautiful, open, bright walls. I'm also gonna be sharing some updates of things that have happened behind the scenes over the past couple of months. And then we're gonna focus on planning and designing and ordering everything for this kitchen project. I am so excited to finally get started on not only building this kitchen, but finally sharing it with you because I know that a lot of people have been asking about progress in the kitchen. So that being said, there is a lot to cover in this video before we spend the next couple of weeks together rebuilding my kitchen. So that being said, let's get started. This kitchen remodeler series is sponsored by my amazing friends at the Home Depot. So let's start at the very beginning because that is a very good place to start for this video. When we first closed on this house, this is what the kitchen and living room and dining room space looked like. There were walls in between the kitchen and the living room, the kitchen and the dining room. There was an opening into the kitchen from the hallway. There were just a lot of walls everywhere and I knew immediately that I really wanted to just open up this kitchen, open up this dining room and make this space feel open and bright and big. So pretty much immediately after getting those keys in hand, my dad and I came into this space and we spent a couple days demoing this entire kitchen and opening up all of the walls. We tore this kitchen down to the studs to prepare it for a fresh start and it was a lot of work, but it was totally worth it. This was a pretty massive undertaking, but demoing this kitchen saved us a ton of money in the total kitchen budget, which was super awesome. But if you want to check out more details about the demo process, you can find a full demo video on my channel by clicking on the link below this video. Now, kitchen demo and drywall reassemble is pretty much about where we left off on my channel with this kitchen renovation. So why don't we hop on into the next part of this project, focusing on the floors. Morning friends. Okay, so today my dad is free, so he's gonna help me rip up the floors in the living room and in the kitchen. Um, excuse me, we have to film. It's Sunday. No filming Sunday. Well, okay, we're supposed to be filming this. Ta -da. They look good. Yeah. Woo, check this out. Before I get ahead of myself, we did have to remove the older laminate floor from the living room area, and then it was time to demo the tile floor in the kitchen, which ended up being a much bigger job than we originally anticipated. Not only was the tile floor installed over about two inches thick of concrete, that concrete was installed over a bunch of lathe metal wiring and about a thousand staples, and it was a job. After a few days of hard work and after putting probably a brand new back on my wish list for the holidays, we were done pulling up the floor. And next step on my to-do list was to remove all of that wiring and all of those staples from the subfloor. Well, 
that was a horrible experience. Zero out of 10, highly not recommended. Uh, that was so much work. Dad's putting in for early retirement. No, you can't retire yet. Oh, I wish my microphone could pick up how badly my neck just cracked. That was straight up torture, straight up torture. Yeah, I'm pretty positive that I never want to do that ever again in my entire life, ever. That's a one and done. Okay, so don't be mad at me, but I know I promised you'd see the new floors and I cover them up instead. I know myself and I would definitely ruin these floors if I did not cover them up. But in the meantime, today I really want to paint and prime this kitchen. Mostly because I just feel like something needs to get done in here. I'm just gonna keep on keeping on in this space and I'm gonna prime and paint it. And that way I can actually work on the dining area. In the meantime, I have my appliances, they are here. So I can move the appliances into the space as well. And yeah, that's where we are. So I am gonna get started on priming and painting. Yeah, sure. All right, let's paint the space, come on. All right, so once the floors were ready and covered, I was able to prime and paint the space and this was so therapeutic and so satisfying because just getting paint on the walls made it feel like the space was way more finished than it actually is. And it felt like so much progress was getting done in this space because really once the paint is on the walls, the rest of the stuff can really start to come together. And speaking of things coming together, paint on the wall means it's time to start planning this kitchen and focusing on the future, so let's get started. Hey friends. Okay, so we don't usually do this very often, this like one-on-one -on -one hang time, but we're gonna try it today. So I get asked a lot about my planning process for projects and I don't think I've actually really fully shared that process with you and I figured like this kitchen renovation is the perfect opportunity to do that and to walk through how I plan a major project from start all the way to finish. So throughout this video, we're gonna be doing something a little different. I guess it's technique of vlog style, which I don't usually do, but I feel like this is gonna be an adventure for both of us, where I am going to kind of alternate between talking through my process as well as showing you some of my process on my computer, as well as screen grabbing some of the design programs that I use. Now, in terms of planning in general, I am a very visual planner. I am a visual learner. I love spreadsheets. I'm super organized. I talked about this in my Q&A video, but I always keep like my paper planner and a tape measure around like no matter where I go. So for me, I have a lot of steps in my planning process. I know that this process does not work for everybody. So feel free to kind of skip through something if you feel like that seems a little overwhelming. I will link all the chapters for this specific planning portion of the video below this video. So you can feel free to kind of skip through and check out whatever section feels good to you. That being said, let's get started first with the general vibe, design, mood of this kitchen. I am so excited about it and I cannot wait to show you my ideas. So let's hop on into the computer screen and grab and let's get started. So because this is a really small space, the general vibe for this kitchen is going to be light and bright, but I still wanted to fit with kind of like our modern, cozy, industrial style, if that makes any sense. We are right now going for the white bright cabinets with the stainless steel appliances. I love the look of some sort of like stone type looking more handmade organic backsplash in this space. And because we do have pretty cool like rustic black wood and black metal accents throughout the entire open concept space, we did wanna go with a black countertop, but we didn't want it to be a solid black. We love the look of marble. We don't love the functionality of marble personally because it does require a lot of maintenance. So we did decide on these delicious looking black quartz countertops with white veining, super, super fancy looking. I'm so excited to see what that looks like in the space and how it ties in, especially with the giant fireplace that is right next to the kitchen. So yeah. One snag that we did run into was that when you do walk into the house, the fridge kind of just didn't have many places to go. We'll talk about that a little more in the next planning portion of the video. But because you do see the fridge when you walk into the house, I thought it might be fun to make some sort of custom wine rack or plate storage or like spice shelf. 
on the side of the fridge so when you walk into the house you are looking directly at that instead of at the side of a refrigerator. I love my fridge, it houses all my favorite things in the world aka food and snacks but I don't love looking at the side of the fridge when I walk in my house like let's be real. Anyway, so that's kind of the general gist of what the kitchen is going to look like. I am so excited about it. I cannot wait to get started on this project, but now that we kind of have an idea of what the space is gonna look like, it's time to start measuring and it's time to start planning and it's time to start laying things out on paper. Again, I am very visual, so we are gonna jump on into the visual portion of this project. Let's get started. Hi, okay, now that we're cut off to speed, I'm gonna snap some photos of the space so that I can get some designs on to my screen and show you what's cooking in my brain in a visual way so that it makes more sense because my brain is in a thousand and one places. So let's do it. Now that we have some photos, let's get designing. So now that I know what we want the kitchen to look like, it's time to actually start planning it out and getting a visual idea of what that's gonna look like. So I like to take some photos of the space, upload those onto my iPad, and use my pencil in order to just kind of draw things out and doodle things out to see what it would look like. Sometimes I have this image of things in my brain and it doesn't always work out in real life. So it is nice to kind of get what I think is floating around in my brain onto paper or onto the screen and to kind of see how things are laid out a little bit better. So fortunately, but unfortunately, the kitchen appliances are pretty much going to be staying where they were in the original kitchen layout. I say fortunately because that means we didn't have to rewire a bunch of stuff and it was a little more cost effective to keep everything where it was. I say unfortunately because it is a very tight kitchen and we didn't have many options for moving the kitchen around. So as much as I would have loved to have gotten a little more creative with the space, we don't really have the space to do that in this particular kitchen but it's all good we've lived with small kitchens forever we know how to navigate around small kitchens we're gonna make it work it's gonna look awesome I'm very very excited for it so yeah if you remember from the demo video essentially the kitchen layout was like a big L the only major difference was that there was a wall between the living room the dining room and the kitchen so the fridge was kind of pushed up against that wall and there was a weird doorway into the kitchen that i did close up so now that that's all open the kitchen is fully going to be an l-shaped kitchen my hope is to be able to fit an island but i'm actually not going to be able to know if an island is going to fully fit in this space until we get the cabinets so that'll be in the next video which will be really interesting for us all to kind of navigate together now on the other side of the kitchen is going to be our little dining nook this is the only space that we have in the house to be able to like actually sit down and have a proper meal together. My friend Danny and I built a custom table for the space. I clearly am talking to you from this table in the video. But yeah, this is a relatively small kitchen, it's still a relatively big project. But now that I kind of have an idea of what the layout's gonna look like, as well as what like the general vibe of the room is gonna look like, it is time to start focusing on something that makes my heart very happy, organizing spreadsheets. Okay, so let's jump back in to me and you hanging out on camera. Hey, how's it going? Hope you're still with me and hanging on tight. Whenever I'm doing a big project, I love to set up spreadsheets for my order forms and just making sure that I have everything ready and available. I also like to take advantage of different functions within my spreadsheet files, such as tabs and kind of just making sure that I have everything laid out for each part of the project. So we are gonna jump on in. I'm gonna show you how I do that and what that looks like for anybody that's interested in kind of navigating a large project and doing some project management on their own. So I really wanted this project to be something that I could do on my own using things that I could source pretty easily. So I partnered up with the Home Depot in order to completely remodel my entire kitchen, which also makes ordering things so much simpler because I'm ordering everything from the same spot. Once I figure out the complete layout of the kitchen, it's then time to kind of get in there and start measuring things and figuring out exactly what I need. So once I figure out that, I plug that all into my file and once I have all of those lists there, I head on back to the Home Depot's website. I grab the links for all of the products that I'm looking to use in my kitchen renovation, drop them in, and then I start checking things off as they are ordered and as they are received to make sure that I have everything that I need for the project. 
The last thing that you want in a major project is to be working on the project and realize you're missing something. So it's really nice to be able to keep track of those things in a spreadsheet. What I also love about the Home Depot website is that you can obviously order things directly to your house or to the store, depending on what is the best way to get things for you. For me, obviously, because I am juggling so many projects, it is so much easier to have things delivered straight to my doorstep. And so that's what I'm doing. So in terms of my planning and my ordering, I like to set up a spreadsheet with all the things that I know that I need. And then once I know what I need, I head on over to Home Depot and I start searching for all of the products for this particular project. One thing that I actually really love about Home Depot's website, or well, a couple of things I really love about Home Depot's website are that A, I can make custom lists within the website itself. So for instance, if I know that I'm going to be ordering a ton of cabinets, I can make a list just for cabinets. And if I ever need to revisit that list to, you know, order something else or get an idea of if I have everything, it is all right there in my cabinet list. I clearly, love lists. <laughs> Another thing that I really love on the Home Depot website is that you can access project calculators right on their website. So there's no guessing games for how much tile I'm going to need or how much paint I'm going to need. Or if I'm trying to figure out the cost for installing these countertops, I can do all of that right on the Home Depot website, which makes my life so much easier. So fast forward to real time in this video, let's talk about these cabinets. I actually ended up ordering ready to assemble cabinets from the Home Depot, which I'm really excited about because they are flat pack cabinets that are ready to ship right away. So after ordering these cabinets, they were on my doorstep about three to four days later, and now they are here and they are ready to assemble. So my next video, we are gonna be talking a lot about assembling those cabinets, the benefits of those cabinets, what they look like and why they're a great option for anybody who might be on a tight budget and a tight timeline when it comes to renovating a kitchen. Okay, you've seen my top secret ideas. Just kidding, they're not top secret like at all by any means. You've seen what is like going on in my brain. There's a lot going on in my brain. And it's definitely different. Like I'm hoping that it translates well into this space, but I kind of won't know until I start bringing things in. But now that my products are ordered, the layout is set, I know what I want to do with the look and the feel of this space. I think we're ready to finally put this kitchen together. So that being said, over the next few weeks on the channel, I will be focusing on building the kitchen of my dreams and I cannot wait to share the entire process with all of you step by step. So if you're as stoked on this kitchen as I am, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video in this kitchen remodel series. In the meantime, friends, I'm going to get to work. So happy DIYing.